It is the nature of desire not to be satisfied, and most men live only for the gratification of it. Aristotle. The cargo cruiser groans and shudders as it cuts through the frigid air, the metal hull vibrating with each turbulent gust. The view from the cockpit reveals a bleak, icy wasteland stretching endlessly below, a jagged terrain of snow-covered mountains glistening under a pallid sky. Inside the ship, the pilot's voice crackles through the intercom, breaking the tense silence. Two minutes out. In the dim, chilly cargo hold, the salvagers and security team prepare for their task. Their breath hangs in the cold air, mingling with the metallic scent of the ship's interior. Nervous energy flickers in the crew's eyes as they check their gear. The muted clicks and clinks of the weapons and tools are stark contrast to the howling wind outside. Each member knows the risks all too well. The Iron Wolves, a seasoned outfit specialising in salvaging down cargo haulers, are reduced to a six-man detail, including the pilot and five salvage techs. A disastrous previous job left their security detail depleted, many either dead or recovering from injuries. Junking is a tough business, and the scars, both visible and hidden, tell that tale. Junkers or scabbers are skilled professionals who band together, seeking fortune amidst the wreckage of the skies, land and sea. These highly mobile, adept individuals excel in their roles. Some are mercenaries, hopping from team to team, while others form tightly knit groups. Trust is paramount, and the most successful teams have weathered many storms together. To bolster their ranks for the mission, the Iron Wolves have subcontracted a band of relic hunters, known simply as X. This group consists of a two-man, one-mech security detail and a salvage tech. Eris, X's leader, is a battle-hardened combat soldier in his 40s, currently serving in the Corporation's Special Mission Detachment. For him, this job is a welcome escape from his official duties, a chance to secure extra income and perhaps a path out of the Corporation's chains. Eris, a figure of resolve and experience, is disillusioned with the Corporation's corruption. With retirement on the horizon, he sees these side jobs as a potential ticket to freedom, but he's fully aware of the dangerous double life he leads. Scrad, a cyber augmented organism, CAO, from the hips down, including his arms, leans over to Eris. The whir of his mechanical limbs fills the silence as he flashes a photo on his arm tech. Eris, check her out. Scrad says, his voice a mix of pride and mischief. Eris glances at the screen, his expression unreadable. She really did that to herself. Yeah, all the hot babes are crown plated. Where have you been? Scrad grins, his eyes gleaming. Shiny is beautiful. Axel, X's salvage tech, hefts what looks like a flamethrower attached to a backpack. Yeah, have you bought a sim on your toy? He boasts, brandishing the new plasma cutter. We'll be in and out before they even know what's missing. The pilot's voice breaks through the chatter. We have a visual. Looks like that spider's feet paid off. That ship is crispy hot. These cargo haulers seem like the gift that keeps on giving. Scrad says as the cruiser loops around the smoldering wreck of the cargo hauler. The harsh landscape below is illuminated by the burning embers, casting a fiery glow on the icy terrain. The cruiser lands with a heavy thud, the rear door lowering to let in a blast of icy air that bites deep making everyone shiver despite their insulated gear. First out is X's Vanguard V109, a 2.5 meter autonomous bipedal combat mech, followed by Eris and Scrad. Scrad checks his arm tech, his voice barely audible over the wind. Whoa, someone's gonna freeze their ass off. Eris smirks, the icy wind tussling his hair. Your ass is coming out with me. Not this baby. Scrad taps his titanium plated butt. How do you take a dump? Axel quips, <laughs> laughter cutting through the tension. Eris's tone turns serious. Scrad, take the flank. V109, watch the crew. I'll stay with the ship. Axel, the Iron Wolves, and their hover halls begin their work on the wreck. The urgency is unmistakable, as one of the scrappers calls over the comms. I have the sections to everyone. 
get the mech down here? Hey, Harris, can we use the mech? The pilot asks. Yeah, it won't take long. Harris hesitates. It's not what it's here for. He mutters, but relents. B109, get that section into the hull. Make it quick. As the fog clears, Scrad spots a small red craft in the distance through his binoculars. Uh, Harris, we got a small ship parked on my ridgeline. Looks like one tango. Suddenly, one of the salvage techs lets out an excited shout. Jackpot, boys! Looks like we got some kind of power cells. As he begins to read the side of the crate, his voice rises in excitement. It says third gen military grade nebular plasma cells. Scrad's eyes widen as he comes to Eris. Who sends this kind of gear without an escort? Eris' voice turns serious. I don't know. I think we should leave this one. Those cells aren't meant for civilian use. If the corporation catches us with those, we're in serious trouble. Yeah, I don't need this. I'm already in enough trouble with that lot. Scrad says nervously. We need to load what we have and leave the rest. This is way too hot for us. Eris warns in an urgent voice. Suddenly, a deafening crack shatters the air as a bullet impacts into Eris' ceramic chest arm. The force throws him off his feet, and he crashes onto his back as he begins to slide uncontrollably down the icy embankment. Contact! Contact! I love the clock! Scrad instinctively drops to one knee, scanning the ridgeline through the scope of his rifle. I've got eyes on him! Looks like two Barracuda scouts! V109, you bag of bolts! Get up here! Thank God, the red ship must be controlling them! Those Barracudas look incredible! Scrad says with a hint of admiration. As V109 makes his way out of the cargo hold, Eris shouts. I'll draw their fire. You flank and disable, but do not destroy. We can reprogram them. Eris begins firing from his position as he struggles along the embankment, leaving spots of blood behind in the snow. V109 launches his rapid recon drone as he moves up the snow-covered mountainside before the two Barracudas explode one after the other. I said we were going to reprogram them. Harris mutters. During the melee, a mysterious man in his red craft is seen retreating into the mist of the mountains. Harris turns to the crew. We need to wrap this up. We don't need any more unannounced visitors. The pilot responds urgently. Grab those plasma cells and anything loose, then exfil immediately. As the crew hastily gathers the valuable plasma cells and other loose items, tension hangs thick in the air. With the plasma cells now in their possession, they know they are sitting on a fortune, but also a ticking time bomb if the corporation catches wind of their haul. Suddenly a ship with a mounted cannon appears on the horizon, looming larger with each passing second. The metallic glint of its cannon barrel catches the dying light of the setting sun. The cannon flashes and a shell whistles through the air, landing with a deafening explosion nearby, sending a plume of snow and debris skyward. They are mucking around. Scrad warns. Everyone on the ship now. The crew scrambles aboard the ship, their boots padding against the metal ramp as they hurry to take cover. As they dash inside, gunfire begins to pepper the hull. Their sharp pain sounds mingling with the thud of hurried footsteps. Amid the chaos, Scrad catches sight of blood on the cargo floor. You've been hit. I'll sort it out when we get back. Upon takeoff, the ship shakes violently, lurching to one side as it takes a direct hit. Alarms blare and the interior lights flicker ominously. They shot one of our thrusters out. The pilot reports, his voice strained. We're sitting ducks. Scrad says in panic. Do we really want those plasma cells? Another crew member adds with anxiety. The ship shudders again as another round impacts sending equipment and personnel across the hull. You boys really need to invest in some cannons. Scrat shouts to the Iron Wolf's crew as he grips a load rope secured to the hull. Eris calls out to the pilot. Can we make it out of here? With a lamp, we can't take any more hits. His hands desperately gripping the controls, trying to stabilize the craft. Eris's mind races as he formulates a plan. Leaning into the cockpit, he declares, V109 and I can engage them from the ground. It'll lighten the load and help you escape. That's crazy, Eris. It'll never work. The next tungsten tip can take out the cannon. They got nothing else. Well, there's not a lot of options. 
Harris climbed inside V109's open hatch. I need all your chart packs, ammo, and med kits. Scrad throws the requested items into the open hatch as Harris straps in, ready for deployment. Get out of there as soon as you take out that cannon. The corporation's gonna be all over this in a second. Scrad advises, his voice tight with apprehension. Harris warns the pilot, his eyes locking with Scrad's. You're gonna have to get down as low as you can. If we blow out the mech's hydraulics, we're all screwed. The damaged ship drops down, deploying a thick smoke screen for cover. The back door opens and V109 jumps out, landing in the snow with a crunch. You good? Scrad checks, his voice crackling over the comms. I'm ready. Just lure it in. We are ghosts in this smoke. As the hostile ship comes in for a final run of the remaining thrusters, Harris and V109 deploy their onboard missile system. Okay, V109, this is a one hit wonder. Lock that cannon and take the shot. The singular missile launches with a hiss from the cloak of smoke, streaking through the air before slamming into the ship's underside cannon and separating from the ship. Nice shot, Harris. You just got yourself a bonus. The crew lets out a collective cheer on board the stricken ship, with the tension momentarily easing. I learned them. They got no idea what's going on. They're probably still pulling the trigger. Scrat says with a laugh. Good job, Harris. We'll get this ship to bay and replace the thruster. X fill in a week's time, five clicks north from here. Stay safe. The pilot instructs as the ship slowly nips away, disappearing into the fog. Harris and V109 take refuge among the jutting rocks, at a safe distance from the wreckage as the cover smoke clears. They watch as the ship that wreaked havoc moments earlier hovers low over the crash site, its engines thrumming. Two mechs leap from its hold, swiftly taking up defensive positions around the wreckage before the craft descends to the snow-covered ground. Eris peers through his binoculars. Strike a sentinels. Great. We just engaged the corporation. A massive CAO emerges from the craft casting a menacing shadow as he surveys the smoldering hull and barren expanse. Following closely behind, a figure cloaked in a heavy grey winter coat descends the ramp with deliberate steps, his presence exuding an air of foreboding and authority. The CAO pivots to face him with a mechanical whir. They took the lot. The figure in the heavy grey coat steps forward, his voice coated in malice. Mobilize your assets. Spend no expense in retrieving those plasma cells. And for those scavengers, eliminate every last one of them. A sinking feeling settles in Eris' gut. I know these goons. I work with that beefcake before Jack's Kane. The other ones, Malik Borm, head of security operations of Metropolis 5. We're up stationed. Somehow I don't think they're here in official business. Eris slides below the jagged rocks concealing their position, a sense of vulnerability overwhelming him as he presses against the cold surface and gazes out across the fog-covered mountains. He feels stranded and lost in the vastness. I have no way of warning the others until X fell. Eris swiftly covers V109 with snow and nestles beside the mech's energy cell seeking warmth until nightfall. He's relieved to find his chest wound caused by the shattered ceramic plate isn't as severe as he initially feared. The freezing temperatures, while harsh, serve a purpose. They help constrict his blood vessels, slowing the bleeding. With the cover of nightfall approaching, Eris waits patiently, knowing the darkness will provide a veil of safety as he prepares to trek up the mountains and wait extraction. What have we got ourselves into? The weight of uncertainty heavy in his voice before closing his eyes in a restless attempt at sleep.